Hey guys, Ryu here. Welcome back to part two of this beginner's tutorial for hard surface in Blender. And uh, in this one, we're going to be focusing on modeling mid detail and maybe some small details for this uh, sci fi device. So I was, you know, thinking about creating some kind of a bracing here around because he kind of these cannot ask for it. And then maybe, uh, maybe some kind of uh, details here inside. We'll think about it when we go. You know, the, usually the way I design or, or work on something is that I jump between places and sort of look at the whole, um, you know, the model as a whole and decide what I want to do next. And it kind of naturally comes out when you start adding elements, you start seeing other, uh, you know, places where you could add something or change something. It just comes with practice, so you know, don't give up and keep studying. There's a lot of people asking me, you know, so how the hell do you come up with block house or like how do you know where to place details? It's just um, down to practice. You need to you need to look at the whole thing and think about balance, okay, functionality and balance, right? You want to leave certain places untouched, you know, like for example, I would never put anything in here. I want it to be a you know blank space, kind of like a space of a place of rest for the eyes to chill out and then you got concentration of detail like for example here you got one cut like this like that and you got this hinge and this one where the light's gonna bounce you know you got um some detail here so you could put something on this handle maybe not in the middle but somewhere at the top and the bottom some kind of notches it kind of naturally comes in eventually look at some um real life objects or designs and just start to, you know try to think how they were designed, how, like how, where, where are the details, you know, how, how are they placed, and then think why, and you will, you know, gradually uh, start understanding how it works. I'm seeing these two notches, right? I'm thinking, it just kind of asks to, you know, asks me to to run like a bracing around this thing or something. So what we're gonna do, is we're gonna go to edit mode, right? We need to apply this first. So let's go to object mode, and go here to the wrench. And let's apply both uh, of these uh, of these cutouts, right? These bullions. Now I can go to edit mode, face, right? So to go to face mode, and we're going to extrude this. So we're going to press Shift D to duplicate this face. Press right mouse button to cancel, then press P, and selection, just like we did with the with these doorways, uh, with this panel here, right? and then go to object mode. Grab this one. Go to edit mode, select the face, E, and extrude, okay? And I think this will do. Then we're going to grab this one, go to top view, orthographic, E, and extrude. Maybe somewhere here. And then we're going to go to object mode and lower the bevel. So, oh, wait, I'm in, I'm in the wrong blender. Hang on, guys. Uh, let me just save this. I forgot I'm in um, 3.0 where I have all my add-ons, my bad. Let me just load the Blender 2.93. So now you Blender 2.93, let me just turn on screencast keys and off we go. Peachy. So um, what we're going to do is go here to bevel and uh, we're going to hold shift and just change the size of it, you know, because it's insane, right? So then we're going to go to face and you can see that because we extruded this um, sideways, we have this kind of like a loop here going on, so we can grab this face and extrude it backwards. So let's just go to top orthographic E and you can just extrude it. It will automatically extrude on Z axis. So somewhere here maybe, or you know what? Maybe somewhere here. This could be interesting. Go to edge mode, control R, Click and move this loop here somewhere, okay, like this. And then we're going to go to local mode, right? Grab this piece here, change to face, grab this piece, and E, and extrude it a little bit inwards here, like that, okay? So it kind of goes to the side of this uh, of this device. But now we need to create some kind of a cut in here to make it, you know, make it work for us, so... We will do that in a minute, but before we do that, let's just extrude this face a little bit deeper. So f go to face, select this, shift, select this one, and you can just use G. So use G and X, and you can move it uh, here until it just pops outside. 
and we don't really need um, this edge here so we can select these two faces press f and go here and press f right and let's just go here and see what happened now we got this kind of a problem here so we can fix this right i think the problem is caused by this here so let's select this one in face mode right and this one and press f and then go let's go here let's turn off bevel in edit mode select this one and this one and press f select this one and this one and press f and then let's go to face mode on the object mode sorry and it's fixed you see so we're good to go we need this edge because you know there's a corner here so we need that so now what we could do right is we could uh, actually create a chamfer here so go to edge mode and let's see how this is going to look with the chamfer we don't need this edge so press x and dissolve edges grab this one Control b and just let's chamfer this a little bit let's see how we look yeah it looks pretty decent actually now this one could be slightly changed so watch this we can borrow this object right Sh go to right view orthographic shift d and move it in here and make it really small right like this and then bring it out so g x and bring it out you can sometimes reuse elements from your design okay but we can change it as z and let's rescale this it's gonna look completely different right although your eyes will be deceived and they will think that you know it kind of has similar design but not really so see we we're using elements that we already created gx move it in here that's cool we also could uh, kind of maybe cut this in here like that or uh, we could create cuts in here let's grab a cube and see how it, how it gonna you know how it's gonna look here um sometimes i don't know how things are gonna look i'm just trying and see if i'm gonna like it or not let's sz scale it and sx and gx move it in here and front view i mean right view sorry um g and just move it here maybe and scale it a bit more on z so sz and let's cut it and see how it's gonna look so let's apply the scale let's uh, apply auto smooth and right click shade smooth shift click this one and control minus now let's go to this uh, object and grab this bull tool above bevel and how we're looking let's just hide it so m cutters that looks pretty cool i want one more on the bottom so we can uh, shift to grab this one and we can array this okay so uh, array and we're gonna array it on z-axis so type 0 here and grab this z and hold shift and just move it move it with your mouse down until you more or less uh, shift to to hide it you know the distance is gonna be more or less the same doesn't have to be super exact yeah it looks pretty cool I'm gonna lie, it looks pretty cool now here technically we should kind of create like a cut uh just to be thorough so we can do that so we can grab another cube and we can auto smooth and shade smooth we can scale this sx gy move it in here go to uh it's gonna be what left view yeah no front view there you go normally when i'm modeling right i'm trying to position everything uh, to face this way so um you know if i if i grab that uh, what i mean is this way and the reason being is that if you go to uh, front view this is where you you know your uh, blender is going to align you to so this is a front view technically so if you model um i just you know started modeling from a side view but that's why i'm sometimes confused here because normally when i model this is my front view um so you can you can go with that kind of a uh, setup uh gx so you can you know gx move it in here and scale it 
and let's just cut it there so select this one and control minus and we're just gonna manipulate with it so select this one and let's move this boolean above um above the uh, bevel so we can actually see where it is and uh, i can see that there's some kind of a problem and see see this kind of a shading here this kind of like a nasty uh clipping or it's not clipping but like a pulling that's caused by the edge that's going to be created by blender i guarantee you that this thing's going to get connected from the corner to this place here so what we're going to do right is we're going to run a, a knife cut right so press k and we're going to run a knife cut press c we're going to run it onto here and press enter and this should fix the issue with the emphasis on shoe today i created it on the wrong geo one more time uh, so uh, front um, so like this one press k then c up to here it's okay and enter and now watch it's gonna disappear see now it's fine because the edge is going through the middle not here so eventually you will learn how to see these things before they really happen and it's going to help you to become better at modeling as the scale it down what i want here is to create an illusion well not an illusion but kind of like a you know gap that's a bit larger than this cutout so press m and cutters it's going to get mirrored right good creates a bit more believable um, situation here also this one this one here could be beveled so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab these edges here because we don't need them we're gonna dissolve them okay so select all them with shift and then x and dissolve because you don't need them grab this one Control b and scale them now i wonder if this one is actually auto smooth because you're getting a weird shading here bevel weighted normal smear yeah it's interesting that it does that in edit mode Turn ah the bevel was off in edit mode. This is why it was doing that. Okay, so we're good to go. Are we good here? Now I was thinking uh, that maybe we can add some elements here as well. So we can again borrow that if we want to, or we could create our own element, you know. But uh, remember, there's nothing wrong with borrowing elements. Okay, so we can uh, shift D, move it in here scale it and then we're gonna do something different with it we're gonna scale it on z like that it's gonna be really thin okay maybe that's too thin maybe something like this and we're going to rotate it holding control so you can snap it to increments but remember you need to be in orthographic view okay it's not gonna work if you're in perspective so if you're in perspective okay what you need to do is r x and rotate on the specific axis but when you're in orthographic view right then you can rotate very easily because you'll be rotating uh, in a deadpan sort of a view so uh, perpendicular to this object which will rotate it on x-axis without problem so we could drop these somewhere here like this i would just rx 180 to rotate them around in gx and move them outside a bit like that and actually let's just bring it to local mode and i want to extend it in so select that one go to face mode and uh, go with e and extrude it inwards then go to edge mode alt click on this edge loop Control b okay and then go to face uh, face mode alt click on this edge here to select the loop of faces and then alt s and scale it down right like this okay awesome so we got something like this now let me think um gx do i want that or hmm, that's a little bit too maybe outside or maybe it's not i have an idea okay let's uh let's create a let, let's let me show you a cool trick shift s and cursor to uh the selected so now when i'm gonna go shift i and add a cube the cube's gonna get added exactly on my cursor so when i scale it it's gonna be you know literally in the middle of it okay so scale it down then s y and scale it on y axis right? and then s x and scale it on x and then we go into apply scale we're going to go into it auto smooth and right click and sheet smooth shift click this uh, 
object and control minus. I'm going to click on this one and go to modifiers and move it in the top. And we're going to have this kind of a cutout. That's a little bit too big as you can, there's a overshooting bevel here. And because I have my um, face orientation turned on, you see that the red color indicates flipped or faces or some faces with problem. So SY, let's scale this a little bit on Y axis like that. And also I think it's a little bit too tall. So SZ and scale it on Z axis like this. And we got this kind of an interesting cartridge situation, right? So M and cutters and how we're looking. Yeah, we're looking pretty, pretty interesting. So we can drop it in. So GX and, you know, drop it in. Like that. And we could drop the bevel here as well. So go to bevel and hold shift and just, you know, decrease the bevel a little bit. It's just less insane. Do the same thing in here, to be honest. Um, just, you know. There you go. Okay. Now this one is to be mirrored to the other side, right? Which is which which it is. And this cut probably should be also on the bottom. So um let's uh let's go shift two and grab this one and then let's apply a ray modifier. Type here zero and hold shift and move your mouse to the left to drop it down. And then we're gonna do this one and we're going to add a ray. And uh, same thing, so type zero here and move it down on Z. So let me see that. Let's just go to side view, right view, and orthographic so we can see very well. Hold shift and just simply adjust it until it fits. And shift two, how are we looking? Yeah, it looks kind of interesting, to be honest. You see now these shapes, they're different, and you can't say, you know, you, you would not think that I borrowed this shape, but they sort of correspond with one another and create, like, a cohesive design. So, you, 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 no, I would not suggest overdoing this, but you can definitely do that, so. Uh, we could create some circular cuts in here as well, so shift, uh, shift A and let's grab a cylinder. And uh, let's... Uh, 32 is fine, actually 24 would be probably better, 24, and 32 is a bit too much. And now I'm going to show you a cool trick with snapping, okay. So let's move this one in here. Now I wanted to snap this to this face, okay. I can just rotate it, in, no problem, but uh, what if you wanted to snap it to this face? It's going to be a bit more complicated, right? So you can go here to, um, to the snapping tool and turn on face snapping and then align rotation to target okay and when i'm gonna press g and hold control you will see that my object will start snapping to faces so i can snap it to this face here right and then g z drop it down scale it and then g z z now let me talk to you about uh, why i press z twice global orientation and uh, local orientation are two different things. There are a lot of orientations here, but we're going to be talking about global and local. Okay, global orientation is the one that you see, which is Y, X, and Z. So G, Z, G, Y, and G, X. However, because this object is rotated, when you press N, you can see it in here, right? Um, rotation. This is what defines the local orientation. So you either switch to local here. And press G Z because you see now the reason why Z goes this way is because this object was rotated from a vertical orientation to the horizontal so the Z axis sort of collapsed this way right which is why local Z is here you don't have to really switch it in here you just simply press axis twice to access the local orientation so G Z Z or G Y Y or, or G X X Right. Now let's move it in. So G Z Z and move it in here. Okay. Let's uh auto smooth and shade smooth. Right. Let's scale this a little bit. And uh, now we can move it. So G X X. We can move it on X axis with G Z. And move it in here, right? And then what we can do is boolean this. So let's go to face mode and control B 
for bevel like this and we're going to create a bolt so you can select both and go to control plus which is a union select this one and go to modifiers and uh, move the boolean above the bevel grab this one and radius and now we need to radius now you see it will not work because it's arraying this on x-axis we need to array it on z-axis so array this on z-axis but you see it will array it on in local orientation okay to array it in global orientation right what you need to do you need to actually apply the rotation here to the target so control a and apply the rotation now the rotation has been reset and you can see it by the outline of the object switched orientation from this to this so now when i'm going to use z or uh, array here it will work all right uh, be careful with applying rotation and scale and sorry and location because they cannot be retrieved in vanilla blender that easily um there is a free add-on it's called world align on which i have a video by the way so you can grab it i think this add-on is free i can't remember i think it's free it's a really good add-on it allows you to get the original local orientation back so press m and move it to cutters and we're done and it looks really cool kind of like two you know two bolts awesome stuff and you see this is already we, we're entering in the realm of small detail okay small detail like here for instance i would like to create two horizontal cuts all right let's reset this origin point to uh, i mean the cursor to origin toward the origin shift a and add a cube so it's going to get added in the middle and scale it i want it to be smaller than this edge a little bit narrower gz move it up here somewhere SZ, scale it down, and that maybe a bit more. I want a tiny gap. GX, move it out, and GZ, and move it up here. And we're going to slush it. So, uh, right click, shade smooth, auto smooth, shift click, control minus. And then select the cutter. And we can either array this, but I'm going to show you a different trick. If you go to edit mode and shift d this and drop it down on the z axis you will actually copy part of this object in edit mode it will still stay the same object but it will be sort of separated right so you will not have to boolean again if you uh, let's go back if you shift d this in object mode and go down you will have to create a second boolean so if i copy this in edit mode shift d z you see that I don't have to, you know, rebully on this. It's just, it's just gonna work. So, uh, object mode, move it to cutters, and then grab this one and move the boolean uh, to the top. So let's just collapse these modifiers. But uh, now I want to show you another add-on that comes with Blender. And it's actually going to allow you to easily manage these modifiers. I mean, it's a little bit better than vanilla. So if you go to add-ons here, and this add-on is called Interface Modifier Tools, I think, this one. There you go. And Save Preferences. So now this will allow you to toggle the stack, open it and close it with one click, delete all, apply on, and... Uh, disable or enable viewport disability uh, visibility so you can disable everything in viewport with one click it's a really neat add-on comes with blender so you know make sure you're gonna drag this bull on top of the stack yeah that looks pretty cool now this thing here in the middle is kind of like hanging by its threads you know it's like sort of suspended so let's do something cool with it shall we uh, let's uh, insert it one more time and extrude it so it's actually going to be you know visibly connected over there inside i like being thorough with my design you know so i just don't like things floating without no without good reason you know i just want things to be properly you know done if you will so now we could borrow these buggers right again shift d and g x and move it in here and scale them to something really tiny and rotate them on uh, x axis and 
Let's get them even more. And GX, move them in here like this. Right? Now we can scale them on X as well. So SX, make them flat right? like this. And GX, move them in. Now we don't have to join them with the mesh. Uh, but we're going to po position them here. I rotate them holding control. So you can snap to 45 degrees so it matches this angle. And put them somewhere here. Right? And then we're going to mirror them down. So... Mm, we're going to let's apply the boolean and we'll leave the rest there is one mirror here but we can also enable another mirror so we're gonna add another mirror right so go to modifier and add another mirror and this mirror is gonna be coming after the first mirror because first is gonna mirror across and then we're gonna mirror this on the z-axis across this one all right and uh oh wait a minute why this one got mirrored. Oh, because it was selected. Wait. Deselect. Oh, hang on a second. Why these are connected? Fascinating. I'll tell you how to fix this. Let's go to edit mode. Select a one vert in a vert mode. Control L to select this whole object. And then press P. And selection. Which will separate it. And select these and you're done. Then, with this mirror here, uh, edit. We're going to mirror this across this object, and it should work. And now you got mirror going across, which is the first mirror, right? And then mirror going across this object, which is the second mirror. I have no idea why these were connected. That's kind of interesting. Um, there is some double element here as well. Look at that. Let's just delete that. Anyway, so you got these kind of like small notches in here, you know, kind of like, you know, clamps or whatever, locks, whatnot. Now the bottom here also, you know, we could use something, maybe some kind of like a um, small cut or whatnot, horizontal maybe. So let's add another cube and drop it down here and scale it and move it here. Hang on a second, maybe, maybe not. See, now that's a happy accident. Maybe not a cut, but also maybe some kind of legs like this. So SX and make it deeper. And let's assign auto smooth and shade smooth. And then what we could do is go to edit mode, to edge mode, alt, control click one of these edges to select the loop of edges. Control B and, and chamfer them, but we need to apply scale so go to object Control a apply scale go to edit mode Control b hold shift and do this and then select this one shift select this one and Control plus and select the main shape here and move this boolean on the top so let's collapse the modifiers see it's very handy i don't boom and we got legs it's actually pretty awesome and then b cutters how are we looking? Oh yeah, we're looking really sick. Nice. So I wanted to add a, I wanted to add a cut here, a horizontal cut, but I kind of thought like, wow, this is gonna be looking good with legs. So you see, um, sometimes design suggests itself. Let's clip another cube and drop it in here. S Z and S Y and move it somewhere here, right? And G X, move it in. And maybe make it wider like this. Maybe that's too big. Right click shade smooth and auto smooth. S X make it a little bit shallower. G X and select this one control minus. Select the main shape and again move the boolean. And this is mirrored, so it should be fine. Select this one and we could actually mirror this to the top, to be honest. So let's add the array to this cutter. And again, remove the x-axis and move it on z to the top. So, whoa, I moved too far. This could be interesting. And click that thing and M cutters. How are we looking? Yeah, we're looking pretty cool. You see how, how detailed it looks now, right? Uh, much more interesting, right? So, 
some people use shadow on the model if you have a powerful machine that's fine but if you you know working on a lower end pc i would suggest to turn it off the algorithm for shadow in, in blender is awful so you know I, I might keep it on but uh, it's it's up to you know up to you and up to how heavy your scene is sometimes uh, even my pc is struggling with you know more heavy scenes with shadows it might help you kind of read the form a little bit better but so you see we're looking really cool um this is a really nice design and um i still want to design something on the top here some kind of like maybe vents you know so let's another cube and scale it down and gz move it up right and uh let's uh go to the top view and orthographic move it in here scale it a bit more and then move it somewhere here s y and scale it a bit more gz move it up so here move it up and sx a bit deeper now apply the scale so Control a apply scale go to edge mode grab this one and Control b and then we're gonna grab these edges okay with shift and Control uh, Control b them here like this and you can actually run a bevel so again um five seven nine nine segments right just in case you need to I change it and then select these so select this one with alt and then shift alt so one more time alt click shift alt click and then control b and the bevel is going to be the same size right so now gz and move it a bit higher so the bevel doesn't interfere here with this surface right that's important now let's see how we're looking let's hit the mirror here on uh, y axis so it's going to get mirrored. We're going to shade it smooth and auto smooth. Now you could combine this with the main structure, but you don't really have to. Just to be thorough, what we're going to do is, you know, inset this. So go to face mode, inset it, and E to extrude it, and S to scale. Okay? And you're going to get this kind of event. You can even drop it lower, so GZ, drop it a bit lower like that. Okay? Then what we could do is select these edges here with Alt. So Alt to select the loop, I for inset, and E for extrusion to create kind of like a rim around it for a bit more interest. Now, we're going to add a mirror to this one, second mirror, right? So we're going to add a second mirror. Let's collapse this. Second mirror, all right? And then turn it off on, on Y axis and across this object. Okay, there we got this kind of situation now you you could combine this together it's going to look a bit better because there's going to be a bevel going on so what we can do is um we could apply both mirrors okay and select this all right and simply control plus and then um it's just going to look better in terms of uh connection because you see going to have this bevel going around around the structure but the bevel needs to be uh, i can see that it's not really on arc there we go that's better all right awesome select this and cutters and we got a really cool you know kind of like a sci-fi i don't know what it is generator server hub whatever the hell it doesn't matter as long as it looks cool it makes sense it makes sense there is some kind of like a panel that you pull out there is some kind of machinery, there's side panels you can open and access, there's a lock if you're like a security thing. I think in the next video, uh, what we're gonna do, I want to push it a bit further and I wanna show you how to design a very simple environment for us. So we're gonna create a simple wall, uh, we're gonna create some flooring, some kind of like um, guards on sides. Then we're gonna add some materials and we're gonna render this and it's gonna look bloody amazing, all right? So also in the next video, I think what we're going to do is we're going to add some lights because we need some lights, you know, some um, some control lights, whatnot. Maybe somewhere here on this panel, um, maybe some kind of like a, I don't know, switchboard. We will think about it. A switchboard actually here could be a good idea. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, 
thanks so much for watching and as usual there is a link to a free ebook if you didn't get it in the previous video grab it now and this ebook is fantastic it's about 80 pages of information it's free and also when you get it we're going to send you some uh, interesting emails uh, with more stuff and uh, some really really good information that uh, might help you on your way to becoming a successful 3d artist Thanks for watching guys and I hope to see you in the next video.